What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 19th C++ tutorial and you know what, all these nice little quick examples are fine and dandy but let's go ahead and build a program that is actually somewhat useful, a program that you can use and you know maybe your teacher assigned you something or maybe your boss came to you and was like you know what Bucky, I want you to make a program that allows the user to enter five different numbers and then I want you to total the numbers for them. But you have to use a while loop. So we're saying, all right, no problem. So here is how I would go about making this program. And by the way, this is some nice little programming tips. You start with the basics of your program and you do it in little baby steps. So first of all, I want to make a loop that runs five different times. So what I would do is make a loop int x, set this variable equal to one. This is just going to be the looping variable while x is less than or equal to 5 let's just go ahead and print out something to make sure our loop is working c out x n line so that's going to print out x and you know how I said that in order to add 1 to x each time you go ahead and write x equals x plus 1 well you can do that but let me let you guys in on a little secret if you go ahead and write x plus plus this is the exact same as writing x plus x equals x plus 1. It's just a quicker and easier way to do things and that's actually where the name C++ came from. They wanted it to be cute and you know anyways that's the history of C++. It came from an old language called C and they added two little plus signs to it thought it was cute. So anyways that's your history of C but what we're worried about is making sure that we have a working loop that runs five times. So let's go ahead and run this so all right, one, two, three, four, five. Our loop is working perfectly. We can now move on to next step. And by the way, this was just a tester line. We don't really need that in our program. So we're saying, all right, our boss told us to make a program so the user can enter five different numbers. So we already know that the CIN is the way that the user can enter a number, but we probably need to store that number in a variable. So let's go ahead and store that number in a variable number. And since we don't know the value yet, we can't set that equal to anything yet. So what we would do in order to have the user enter a number five times is inside this loop, go ahead and write CIN number. Now our loop is going to run five times and a user is going to enter a number each time before the program quits. So what I would do now is test the program again just to make sure it's working. Alright, 43, 54, 66, 2, and 3. Enter. Our program's done. So now we see not only do we got a loop that runs five times, but we also have the user enter five different numbers. So our program is working five and dandy so far. So we're saying, all right, now what's the last thing he said? Oh yeah, he wanted to find a sum of all those numbers and print it out to the user or something. So we're saying, all right, now not only a number variable, but we need another variable to hold the sum or the total of all those numbers. So what I would do is go ahead and put int total and by default, their total is gonna be zero because they didn't enter any numbers yet. That's what we know. So now what we can do is this. You might be thinking this. So just go ahead and set total equal to number. But whenever we run this, it's not going to work because say they enter 10 the first time. Where then total is equal to 10. Okay, it's working fine so far. But the next time they enter 8 and we we're expecting 18. Well, this isn't being added to total. Total is now being changed to 8. So instead of being 18, it's just 8. So this isn't going to work. So what we need to do is do this. Total equals the old total plus the new number. So now what happens is this. Whenever they enter 10, it's going to be 0 plus 10. Total is equal to 10. The next time they enter 8, 8 equals number. So 10 plus 8 equals the new total of 18. So let's go ahead and once this loop is done running, let's go ahead and just give them a nice little printout on the screen. Um, your total is total and might as well end that line why not so let's go ahead and run this program and now let's go ahead and run it and make sure it works so let's go ahead and put 10 enter 8 enter 2 enter 5 enter 
5, enter. Your total is 30. So all right, let's go review this one last time. It seems like everything is working fine. Let's just go ahead and make sure. Well, I guess I can cover that up. That says end line there. Now I'm covering it up. So basically, the first time, the first thing we did is we got a loop that worked. And then we wanted to have the user enter a number, and then we did something with that number. So what happened is this: the first time the user entered a number, it was 10. So the total, which was zero before is now equal to 0 plus 10. So now total equals 10. The next number they entered was 8. So now the new total is 10 plus 8, which was 18. The next number they entered was 2. So 18 plus 2, now total equals 20. Next number was 5, now it equals 25. The last one was 5 also, now it equals 30. So this is basically saying, all right, take the new value of total and set it equal to the old value plus the number that they entered. And at the end, we just said your total is 30. Works pretty good. So let's go ahead and just to make sure that it's working good, let's really test this. Add some big numbers like this. Why, why do I keep entering the same number each time? And that. So, you know, okay, I'm not gonna check this in my head, but you guys can go ahead and check it out on a calculator. And if it works, then it means we just built the best calculator on earth. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this and email this to Microsoft, and hopefully they pay me, you know, just a couple million dollars for it. So you go ahead and what I wanna stress in this tutorial is this. Not only this is how you build a basic program to, you know, it's just an example of why a while loop would be useful, but also whenever you're building programs, take it in baby steps. Do the most basic thing first, and then once you got that working, go on to the next step. And then once that working, you can go on to the final step. And now we can do something like maybe we can find the average of all these numbers, or maybe we can um, find the product or the quotient or something stupid. So again, take your program in baby steps. That way, you don't try to build a whole program, and then at the end, when you got 10 different errors, you're saying, all right, what went wrong? So that is the basics of not only how to be a good programmer, but also how to use the while loop in a meaningful way. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, just going to go ahead, cut this, and paste it to Microsoft. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial when I'm a millionaire.